What is up, guys? Thanks for tuning in to the next episode of the Three Peaks Fitness Podcast. I'm Coach Mark. I'm Coach Lynette. Today, we're going to talk about how quickly you can actually lose your progress. Ooh, how Sorry. quickly you can actually lose your progress uh, once you stop working out. Yes. So, um, and this is for all ages and lifestyles. Mm-hmm. But it's really common to, as soon as you get injured or busy or whatever, uh, or, or go on vacation, just like, oh, take some time off. People think nothing of it, but they, yeah. we all don't. I, I didn't even realize this until I started specifically studying it. There is a cost that comes with taking time off, and that cost goes up exponentially with each decade of age that you hit. Mm. Uh, but anyway. Yeah. <laughs> well, do you want to kind of break down the study? Yeah, okay. So the study that I uh, looked at, it was conducted at the University of Arkansas um, a few a couple years ago. And it was published in JAMA, the Journal of American Medical Association. And they took a group of active 65-year-olds. We've talked about this in a podcast a, a few uh, weeks ago. But uh, I think it's really important to bring this up again. So uh, they had these guys uh, lay in a hospital bed, and they can only get up to go to the bathroom or go eat. So um, what they did, and so after just 10 days of doing this, of only getting out of bed to go to the bathroom or eat, they had lost six months of their gains. Mm. Um, and, And so for this population, they were specifically looking at muscle size and muscle strength. But uh, this is interesting because think about what a muscle's job is. Everyone thinks, oh, muscles, that gives you strength. But there's a ton of other things that muscles do. They don't just provide strength and provide, you know, function. They also store nutrients. They process glucose. And uh, they are responsible for our metabolism. So if you're reducing the size and the strength of muscle, you're basically reducing the size of the factories in your body that Mm. process a lot of the things that are happening in your body. So there's a lot of things uh, that are reduced. So a lot of people that have gone on bed rest notice a mental change in them. So because of the metabolism and everything that goes down, there's a mental decline that they feel. There's an energy decline. There's a lot of things that decline that they wouldn't normally associate with muscle loss. Mm. And then another thing the study didn't cover, but you know it's happening, is when you're losing muscle, you're also losing bone. And so, and and it's hard to, you know, bone takes a while to accumulate. So you have to think about that. So whenever we take time off, we have to think about a lot of things that we're losing over time. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, these guys in this study were, they were 65 years old. So the 10 days... Um, yeah, they lost all their gains, six months of gains in 10 days. Well, a lot of our listeners are going to go, well, you know, I'm 40, so that's not going to happen to me. It's like, yes, it is happening to you. Maybe not in 10 days, but Mm -hmm. maybe it's going to happen in 30 days. You take 30 days off, you lost six months of your gains. Yeah. That's, so that's the study that, uh, I was looking at the demographic was younger. Okay. And after 10 days, there was an 11% reduction ah, okay. in muscle size, mostly uh, due to um, glycogen and water depletion. Mm. Uh, but that makes sense with what, with what you're saying, right? Yeah. If, you, if you're basically, that's the beginning of your body saying, hey, we're not using these muscles, so there's no need to have them. Yeah. Uh, and so we're going to stop uh, yeah. using these factories to, <laughs> yeah. to process the blood sugar. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, but... It was after about three weeks, there was a serious uh, decline in strength and muscle size. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's happening. Even if you are, you're like, oh, I'm 40 years old. You know, I'm not 65. Right. No, it's happening. You know, all it takes is is that one sickness to derail you or, or you know, you go on vacation and even though vacation is only a week, you, you – extend that vacation yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, and two so, or three weeks and, and well, you're back and to square one. With the uh, reduction in muscle size, like I said, you know, that's how your body produces blood sugar. I mean, how it processes blood sugar. So you get more diabetes. Your risk of diabetes mm. goes up 
as the muscle size goes down. Yeah. And so you got to think about that too. And again, you're not building bone. Your body is either building or tearing down. Mm -hmm. And if you're not actively building it up, things are getting torn down. Yeah. And we're even seeing it in teenagers during the pandemic. No. I know. Yeah, and active, you know, less active uh, teenagers that sit, you know, and doing, sitting at school all day, sitting, and then they sit at homework, sit, not doing anything. It's happening to them, too, when mm -hmm. biologically it shouldn't be happening. It should be com complete. Uh, it never gets easier than when you're a teenager to, to you know, or, yeah. a you know, or your teenage boy to, to be in shape. But we've seen wow. it. Wow. Yeah, we've seen it. And it's, 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 it's kind of a big thing right now because a lot of the teenagers during the pandemic, they're still trying to figure out, well, what do I do now? Because they've yeah. lost those formative years of learning how to move. So, yeah, don't think because you're not feeling anything that it's not happening. Oh, hormones. Yes. Do you want to talk about hormones real quick? Yes. So I have been reading a fascinating book called Spark. I recommend it to everybody by Dr. John Beatty. So he talks about the mental benefits of exercise. And so, uh, so far we've been just talking about the physical mostly. But, uh, yeah, he goes through each population and talks about the effects of exercise on your brain. And it's really fascinating. It's super science-y, but it's really good. So he talks about, he, <laughs> he did a whole chapter on girls and women and how over your age, you know, when you're in childbearing years, you've got this hormone profile, you know, every it's changing every month. It's constantly changing and how exercise can offset a lot of the emotional upheaval that can happen during all the different hormone fluctuations. And then... When you start getting out of the childbearing years and going into menopause, how exercise will help with that transition as well. Mm. And then there's a lot of things that happen when, you know, when your estradiol goes down, then the exercise will help boost you back up. So it's absolutely essential. Like exercise is like medicine for your brain. Yeah. And then he talked about exercise for anyone with depression, and he has a whole section on anxiety. Mm -hmm. And he t goes into, at a cellular level, what is happening when you exercise. He also goes does a whole section on ADHD and how exercise is basically an ADHD drug without the side effects. Mm. And so um, I really recommend it to anybody that's interested in their mental health, and exercise is essential. So when you take time off, oh, it'll take a few days off. You're basically going off your meds. You know, we talk yeah. about, you know, people who are under some mental care when they go off their meds because they don't feel the need for it. And then they start, you know, feeling bad, feeling terrible. Oh, and, yeah. You know. <laughs> As someone who has anxiety and depression, I, I, there's a, 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 I can notice, like, big time mm. when I'm not active, when I'm not exercising. There's, I love that analogy of... Uh, it's like coming off of your yeah, like going meds. off your meds. Yeah, it's, it's the same thing. It's mess. Yeah. It's, your hormones are not balancing themselves properly when you're not active because as human beings, we're meant to be yeah active. Yeah. So exercise turns things on that actually protect your brain from a lot of the harmful effects of you know the mental illnesses. I mean, it's not a cure all. You may still need meds, mm -hmm. but the exercise really makes everything more effective, and you may ha may not need as much of a dose. Yeah. But it's absolutely essential. Medicine, medication cannot make up for the lack of exercise. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, um, yeah, so that's just another really important aspect is taking time off from exercise will affect you mentally mm -hmm. as, as well as physically. Yeah, so and then in terms of some kind of tactical things to help uh, solve this problem, right, and making sure that you're not losing all of that progress physically and mentally. Yeah. Um, you know, in a perfect world, right, you wouldn't take any time off. You could work out every day. Yeah, uh, yeah. And, you know, while that may not be realistic for some people, you know, especially if you're, you know, you got your kids running, blah, 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 you know, we get it. Um, but there's absolutely no reason why you can't at least get your heart rate up every day. Yeah. Everyone has time. It's I don't like, care what have I done busy today? you are. Yeah. It takes 5, 10, 15 minutes. Just get your heart rate up. Get, it doesn't even need to be like a, a, a serious sweat, right? But just get get your body warm, you know, yeah. get, get active, get the nerve, turn your nervous system on. You know, you, you do have time to do that, whether it's, you know, going for a, a brisk walk or a jog or gardening or just, if you only have five minutes, do some squats. Yeah. 
in the morning, squats, push up, just something, you know, yeah. do something to, to, to use your muscles. Yeah. And what I did um, once, uh, it's been a couple days where like, it was just a terrible day. Like I did not have a single minute to spare. I'm like, you know, I, I do have to clean this kitchen. Mm -hmm. So I was like, all right, I'm going to set the timer for 15 minutes. I'm going to clean as fast and as hard as I can. And go. I got my heart rate up and my kitchen <laughs> <Yeah>. cleaned. <laughs> <laughs> that's what you, yeah, that's what you got to do. Yeah, that's I was like, I'm just going to treat this housework like a workout. There you go. Yeah, yeah. you know, some marping, you know, do everything let's, uh, with a flare, turn on some get music. Weighted, did you get a weighted mop? No. <laughs> yeah, there we go. There we go. Yeah, just really put my, you know, really get into it. So, um, yeah, so get, yeah, get that heart rate up. Um, you know, try to, uh, you know, if you aren't able to be active, really for any extended period of time or, you know, especially if it's a day where you're just not, you know, you're just not going to do anything. Um, I would say, you know, still making sure that you're eating well, you know, to make sure that you're maintaining, uh, you're, you know, you're getting enough protein, mm -hmm. you're not overeating. So that way we're not you yeah. know, putting on too much fat. Um, you know, taking into account the fact that you're maybe not as active. So, so yeah, you know, you're not, you're not burning as many calories that day. We don't track calories or anything like that, but, you know, yeah. there is still some truth to it. So, you know, if you know you're not active or haven't been active for a while, like, you know, it's even, it's even more important to pay attention to, to what you're eating. Um, and, uh, yeah, do you have any other, any other tactical things to help with people who are, who are you know, taking time off? Maybe it, they shouldn't be. Yeah, so if sometimes motivation is a, is a problem for people, like, oh, they feel like they have to feel the inspiration or motivation, mm. and then they'll take the action, they need to flip that. Yeah. The action comes first, and then the motivation. So if you're just having one of those blah days, where you're like, oh, I know, I know I should do this. I know what I need to do. I just don't do it. I hear that a lot. Mm -hmm. So what I would do say is, all right, you got to do something right now in the moment. Like if you're sitting in your car listening to this and you're, you're at a stoplight, do something like flex some muscles really quick. You've got to act on that thought that you're having. Like I got to do something for myself. You're practicing that follow through mm -hmm. and that, that action will lead to another action. Then you'll go home, unload those groceries, maybe do a few squats while you're unloading those groceries. That action will lead it to another action. The action will create the motivation. Don't wait for the motivation. You, mm -hmm. you do something that's really simple that you know you can do now and that will create a domino. And then when you get enough motivation, like, okay, I'm feeling motivated right now. Maybe that's when you call a friend and say, let's, let's go for a walk. Let's set up a schedule or you set up that workout at the gym. You use that five minutes of motivation that you have to set things up for later on when you don't have it. Do not plan. Don't make motivation your workout plan because mm -hmm. motivation is a roller coaster. It goes yeah. up. It goes down. So plan for the times when you're not going to want to do it. You've got to put that plan in place so that like, oh, wow, why did I think I'd want to do this? It's like, well, plan for not. <laughs> yeah, of course, you're not going to want to go jogging now. It's 30 degrees outside, and it's kind of misty out there. But now that you've got a friend meeting you, and it's an appointment time, and now it's going to happen because yeah. you've planned for your future self to not want to do it. Yeah. So use your five minutes of, of action to create motivation and to plan for the future. Yeah, that's such a good one. Yeah. That's, um, uh, I heard a quote, I have no idea where it came from, but it's, uh, motion leads to emotion. Oh, that's the quote. so motion, okay. like you got to put yourself in motion and then after you'll yeah. feel it's not, it's, it's what you were saying about a lot of people have it flipped. Yeah. yeah. It's not, you're not waiting. Um, yeah. You're not, you're not waiting. You got to do it. And then magically you're like, Oh, okay. Like now I'm feeling this. You have to, you have to attack, right? You have to attack that. Yeah. That feeling of right. like, I don't really want to do this. Start with something like, small, like, yeah. right? So like, you know, when you're in yoga class and they've got you in that fully relaxed, what is it called, corpse pose, mm -hmm. and then it's time to get up and leave class, they don't tell you, okay, sit up, it's time to go, class is over. What do they start with? They start with your fingers and toes. Move mm -hmm. your fingers and toes. Do this. Okay, now move your arms and legs. And you're slowly moving more and more, and then you slowly roll over, and they ease you into getting active again. So use the same principle. Do something really small 
and then something that's a little bit bigger than that until you can do the thing that you wanted to do in the first place. Yeah. 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 Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, guys. So basically, long story short, um, don't take time off. <laughs> yeah. Use your, use, the body's use it or lose it. Do something. Use Always it. something. Always That's something. your mantra. Always something. Yep. All right, guys. Hopefully this was helpful. We'll talk to you next time. All right. Bye.